In the last video, we established the rule for the general derivative of an exponential function to any base. So now let's practice using it uh, and using the rule um, to solve derivatives a little bit more quickly. Because, um, you know, as our general approach is for derivatives, first of all, we want to understand why a derivative is true, like with the power rule, with the chain rule, with the quotient rule, with these rules such as derivative of ln or e to the x or whatever else. Um, you know, it's it's meaningless unless we kind of get the purpose. But, you know, as for simplicity's sake, if we're trying to solve derivatives or, you know, work on the test or homework, uh, it's usually easier to just take the approach where, okay, I can memorize the rule and just use it to solve the answer. I not have to go through the proof process every single time. But anyways, let's go ahead and do some. So first example, it says uh, d dx of 2 to the x. So, you know, take the derivative of 2 to the x with respect to x um, as using Leibniz notation. But, you know, as my rule over here says is if, you know, no matter what the base is, any base, and technically I probably should be specific that this uh, only works for um, positive numbers and, you know, typical your typical exponential functions, that should be said, uh, but something that we would not overlook if we were in our textbook or in class. Uh, but anyways, um, we would have natural log of a times a to the x. I wrote it backwards from how I wrote it up here, but it doesn't really matter. It's just those, they're, they're the two things are multiplied by commutative property. It doesn't matter which way to write it. So I, I would generally write 2 to the x multiplied by ln 2. Uh, I'd write the ln a at the end rather than at the beginning, but again, it doesn't matter. Either way is fine. And this is consistent with what we solved by the difference quotient in the prior video. And sa same thing as if I had 10 to the x, well, it's derivative would be 10 to the x multiplied by the natural log of 10 and so forth. Any exponential function in general, we can just solve using the rule. Now, in the next few examples, they're a little bit more complicated because uh, we may have to use the chain rule, product rule, quotient rule, all those other rules for derivatives if it's a little bit more complicated. So say we had, for example, 5 to the 2x plus 1. You can technically rewrite this using properties of exponents and things and solve it that way. Um, but the chain rule, in my opinion, is just easier because if I want to solve the derivative of something, again, I can focus on inside, outside. So let me go ahead and highlight like I like to do. But the outside would be 5 raised to the power of the inside, which the inside would have 2x plus 1. So if we're using the chain rule, um, we would always take the derivative of the exterior function. So the derivative of 5 to a power is, well, notice if, if we're really focusing on the rule, the, actually the derivative does not change. Much like e to the x, the derivative of a to the x is exactly the same. The only difference is you need to multiply by the ln of the base. So... Uh, and, and again, the essence of why that was true is the chain rule. So essentially the derivative of five to the X is just five to the X. Um, in this case, I have something more inside, but as the chain rule says, we take the derivative of the outside, you leave the inside alone. Um, and then we need that LN five because uh, it was not base E. Whenever your exponential function has a base other than E, you have to multiply by the natural log of the base, which is in essence from the chain rule. But also we had we, you know, as we know from the chain rule, we have to also multiply by the derivative of the inside. Um, and in this case, 2 to the x plus 1 is our inside function. The derivative of 2 to the x plus 1 is just 2. So we'd also need to multiply by 2. And it's kind of like we have to do the chain rule twice. Technically, it's not. But essentially, we're using the rule to do this part, uh, leaving the inside alone and just applying the derivative of a to the x um, as a uh, formula. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside um, by chain rule right there. Uh, and we could probably clean that up um, or and so forth, but that's good enough. But at the end of the day, we have 5 to the 2x plus 1 multiplied by 2 times ln 5. And, you know, maybe, maybe it would make more sense to write 2 times ln 5 at the beginning and then multiply that by 5 to the 2x plus 1 or whatever. But at the end of the day, um, gets kind of there's a lot of little multipliers in there when solving such derivatives. Um, and say we had um, x times three to the x plus one. Now here we would need the product rule because again, I have something times something. So I need to do first d second plus second d first. So first d second would leave me with three to the x plus one times ln three. Again, uh, when, I, when I'm taking the derivative of any exponential, 
I'm using the rule and I'm again, nothing changes. I'm just multiplying by the natural log of the base as I'm doing so. And then we need to do plus second D first and D first is just going to be derivative of X is just one. So I would end up with three to the X plus one um, as a common factor here. I could even factor this out three to the X plus one as common. And that would leave me with um, X ln three plus one. Or again, however you want to write it, but um, we, you know, get a common factor in our derivative there. Um, and if we had a product of different based exponentials, there are actually ways you could rewrite this and so forth, um, because you could actually just write this as 4e quantity to the x power, um, but that would kind of change our base. Or we could use the product rule. Again, with differentiation rules, there's a lot of times more than one strategy to solve it, but there always is a unique correct answer because a derivative describes the slope of the given function which is going to be unique representation um, but anyways let's go ahead and just use the product rule because i think that's easier so if we did first d second uh, that's actually pretty easy because d second derivative e to the x is exactly e to the x nothing changes uh, and then second d first uh, the derivative of 40 x is just 40 the x multiplied by ln 4 so they're very very similar because e and 4x uh, e and 4 to the x power are both pretty much the same, right? E to e is just a, a specific number, about 2.718. Uh, so those are not all that different. And their derivatives, uh, when we're multiplying by the product rule, aren't that different either. Um, and for the last example, you would need the quotient rule um, to deal with um, the quotient. So in the next video, we, let's discuss the general derivative of a logarithmic function now that we've kind of understood and, and looked through the derivative of two to the x, 10 to the x, so forth.